I was in touch with the trip organizer a couple of years ago at a conference, Phil Ainsley, and we talked a bit about the possibility and uh, he wasn't sure if he was going to organize another trip because he's done two before uh, and then it just started coming together so we chatted a bit more and he invited me along so I'm thrilled to, thrilled to be able to go. There's about 25 of us going from six different countries. New Zealand, Australia, the Netherlands, the UK, Canada and the US. And just to be able to go to Nepal and see the culture and the climbing culture that's there as well uh, and to spend three weeks at 5,000 meters is going to be really interesting. In terms of understanding human physiology, there isn't a better model of hypoxia than a sustained exposure of relatively young, healthy people to this, to this stimulus of low oxygen there. Um, in particular, what we're looking at uh, is how brain blood flow responds to changes in blood gases that, that are from the high altitude exposure. But there are people looking at cardiovascular function, graded exercise testing, respiratory responses, sleep. Uh, so there's a lot of different integrative studies going on. So it's a huge opportunity for these undergraduates and all the trainees and really all the investigators to be able to go along and, and just learn from each other. I guess it all dates back to um, about a year and a half, two years ago when uh, Trevor actually teaches a third year course, uh, Physiology 3104. And it was early on in the semester where I actually approached him and I asked him, what kind of research are you interested in? And he asked me if it was possible if I could build a, a supine bike, where it's a regular exercise bike, you're sitting up on an upright, but he wanted one where you're laying flat, it was adjustable, it was portable, that was the main thing, you have to be, you have to be able to take it apart, put it into suitcases, and we also had to be able to measure the resistance of someone that's biking, how much power they're all putting, and um, on top of all that, I had to be tilted up, or be able to tilt it up on a 45 degree angle. And it took me about, I'd say, three trips to Kelowna in about three weeks, in order to finish it and as of right now it's um it's not perfect but we got baseline data with the fine it's gonna make it's gonna make the trip it's gonna it's undestructible basically well professionally this is an incredible opportunity I'm, I'm relatively new to mount royal i'm new getting a research program going so just in terms of getting involved with this international group of collaborators is so good for my career in terms of what i'm going to learn from it uh, and also just the publications that we're going to rake in a lot of data over uh, over three weeks we've already got a ton from Kelowna for the baseline testing a few months ago. So just in terms of research productivity, it's so good for all of us. Uh, and really will set the stage for, uh, for a lot of writing over the next couple of years. Uh, we'll land in Kathmandu, which is about 1,400 meters. So we'll actually have an advantage because here in Calgary, we're just over 1,000 meters above sea level. Uh, and then we'll fly into Lukla, which is just under 3,000 meters. That's about the same height as the mountains around, uh, around Canmore, just for a frame of reference. Uh, and then we'll start the trek up and we're gonna go all the way to 5,000 meters. So we're gonna be sick. You know, there'll be uh, probably potential illnesses from food, but also just the high altitude illness we're all gonna get. Um, I think I'll be okay. I'm most worried about that Trevor's gonna drag me down. <laughs> if uh, if he gets down. sick and he's and he needs to come down, I'll have to come down with him. That's right here. <laughs> Remember who's paying your salary, yeah, right? Exactly. So. <laughs>